This is the second video in terms of using SPSS for multiple regression. Recall in the first one I showed you how to get the output and I showed you how to find the p-value. Only one thing I want to just reiterate is that you must have your gender variable coded female as one and male as zero for this to for your output to be meaningful. When you provide me with your frequency distribution tables on the exam, I'll be able to know that. Okay. It's actually okay in the real world if you do men as one and females as zero, but for the test, I want you to do this in this way, and I tell you here why that is. Okay, it's probably best if you follow along using this text lecture when I interpret this output, because switching back and forth between SPSS and then showing you what these numbers mean will be awkward. Okay, so. I showed you how to get the output. We did that before, and I showed you here's what it looked like, and we used this p-value. Now what I'd like to do is interpret these unstandardized coefficients. Recall that those refer to the slope in your regression line, okay? And here I show you A is your y-intercept. This is the first slope. That's the second slope. Remember, our dependent variable is income. Our two variables are age, x1 is age, and x2 is gender. So using these numbers here, there's the y-intercept, the 539.623. That goes right there. Here's the first slope for age, 105.948, there. And here is the one for gender, 1266.534. That's where you see that there. And then all I did here was I rounded them to tenths, okay? So these are the same numbers here. They're just rounded. It's okay to round in my class. Just round correctly. Okay. In order to figure out whether they have, whether these numbers are meaningful, we have to see whether or not the p-value of that independent variable is meaningful. Excuse me, is significant. So for age, 0.036, think of that as 3.6%. That's less than 5%. That's less than 0.05. So it's significant. And now this 105.948 is meaningful. Okay. Notice for gender, that's 16.9%. 16.169 is the same as 16.9%. That's greater than 5%, greater than 0.05. It's not statistically significant. So this number here in green is not meaningful. Okay, so we can interpret age because it's statistically significant. So I've rounded this here to 105.9. Okay, so what that means is when all other independent variables are held constant for every one year increase in age, it increases the monthly income by $105.90. Just turn that into dollars. Basically, an increase in age increases the monthly income. But on the test, I'd want you to interpret that exactly. Okay? Now, the dummy variable, I'm going to interpret it even though we know that this p-value is not significant. So this is actually meaningless here. But in terms of the test, you're still going to have to interpret it because it's a little bit different. Okay? Recall, female is 1, male is 0. Okay? And this is not significant. When you read that, you'll find that. So we're going to use this little saying here to show that you know that it's not significant. Okay, so we're going to play make-believe for the test, and this is what you would do. You would say, if this variable were significant, the unstandardized coefficient or slope would mean when all other independent variables are held constant, when the person is female as compared to male, monthly income increases by... $1,266.40, but actually this is meaningless. So that is how we would interpret that coefficient, assuming that this p-value was actually less than 0.05 and it was meaningful. So if you do run into something that on, like that on the test, you just use my little example right here, and you'll paste it in there, and you'll, but, and you'll still be able to get the points on the exam. Okay. Again, this number is actually meaningless in the real world because the p-value is too high. Okay, but we're just pretending for in terms of the test. So it's a little bit different when you have a dummy variable than when you have a ratio variable. Okay, so you can look at the wording between here and here to get the difference. And I don't want to go over and over because I want to keep these videos short. Okay, so that's how you do the 
unstandardized coefficients using SPSS. The next video will look at the standardized coefficients or beta.